If you were asked which highly demanded dream fight in the history of mixed martial arts would you like to see, what would be your answer? Like fighter, I respect him. But like human being, I don't understand this guy. My nickname is El Kukui, you know, that's the boogeyman. That nickname, El Kukui, that's a perfect nickname for that guy. That guy's terrifying. Tony does stuff to people. Everybody who fights him looks like they fell off a train. I think Tony Ferguson is a nightmare for anybody. Good defense so far. Ferguson. Oh, God! Time. He's Tony got it. Ferguson! Yeah. Hang in there with him. There's no point of comparison for Ferguson. No, no, who you can oh, Look at that elbow. Oh, elbow. He knows. Oh, my goodness! Hit it! It's all over! Kevin can survive this. If Tony 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 We think that you already know our choice. We believe that you thought the same as soon as you clicked on this video. So get comfortable and get ready to see the full breakdown of rivalry between Habib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson that could have happened five times but ultimately haven't due to many reasons. Hello, I am Habib Nurmagomedov, I am a UFC fighter, I am from Russia, Dagestan. My next fight 19 April in Orlando, USA on Fox 11. My opponent, Rafael Dos Anjos. Let's go fight. Year of 2014. Habib Nurmagomedov debuted in the world's best league more than two years ago. Arriving in the UFC with a record of 16 and 0, he had time to beat five opponents one after another and was looking to add another name, Rafael Dos Anjos. On April 19th at UFC on Fox, the Dagestani Eagle earned a convincing victory via unanimous decision, which happened to be his sixth inside the major promotion. And I remember meeting Coach from AKA too. I remember in an elevator one time when he was like, you're Tony Ferguson? And I, I, I looked at him and said, yes, sir. And he kind of laughed at me. Who, who was this? I was like, oh, I think it was one of the coaches from AKA. I don't remember. Okay. We were in one of the fights. Why did he laugh at you? But I remember... I don't remember. I just remember little things like that. And I know Josh Thompson's fighting out of AKA. So that's extra motivation for me when I go inside the gym. You know, and I, I said it before, I like kicking guys out of these big name gyms. I know Josh has his gym coming up. I have my facility coming up too. You guys are going to see an excellent fight coming July 15th. I just want to let you guys know that I'm pissed off. I'm inside that cage. It's going to be wondrous. And I'm going to come out with that finish. Besides Nurmagomedov, there was another bright lightweight who broke into the UFC one and a half years earlier. Tony Ferguson was just getting a taste of a big game and progressing in huge strides. After the win at the 13th season of the Ultimate Fighter Show, young El Kukui had a full-blown debut at the numbered event, got rid of two opponents, then lost to Michael Johnson by a decision due to an injury came back after recovery and added five more names to his win column. On July 15th of 2015, the boogeyman had an extremely impressive victory, exhausting and gutting Josh Thompson, who had no chances against our hero. It wasn't I could get him out there, but you can't take getting into the cage, the octagon with a veteran like that, and getting some good mat time. I said I didn't want to get any mat time in here, but this was a hell of a fight to get some of that mat time. And I'm proud, and I want to thank you guys for showing up. You guys were kicking oh! The last triumph of the American with Mexican roots put him to a new level. Ferguson broke into the very thick of the top 10 best lightweights on the planet and expressed his readiness to clash with the most dangerous opponent there was. By December of 2015, the situation was the following. The most competitive division of the world's best league has two young and hungry beasts who go toe-to-toe -to -toe on a streak of six victories and want the hardest challenge which will get them closer to the top five. 
The UFC matchmakers also noticed it. That's why they decided to put Habib Nurmagomedov against Tony Ferguson for the first time. For some time, everything was going its way and promised no troubles. Days, weeks and months were passing by. Training camps were at their final stage, while the athletes were reaching their peak condition, getting closer to the set date. However, at a certain moment, everything went south because of the Eagle, who got injured in training. The world's best league did not reschedule this event and offered El Kukui another opponent to slay in the face of Edson Barbosa. Ferguson did not even think of refusing the fight, even despite the change of opponent. That's why he said he was ready to dismantle the Brazilian. We were preparing for Khabib Nurmagomedov, obviously. Put on some hefty pounds, got up to 201. Now I'm about uh, close, like I'm not gonna tell you exactly where I'm at, but we're really prepared for this guy. And uh, in any fight, I never worry about what they're gonna do, I always worry about what I'm doing. I was pissed, Ariel, I'm gonna be honest with you. I got up to 201 pounds preparing for this bear wrestler and I want to take them to his home. I want to make sure, in Sambo, right? You take them from their feet to their back, what's that? Instant win, baby. <laughs> and then I was going to finish him. He robbed me of that. Put you in a bubble, buddy. But next is uh, Edson Barbosa. They hit me up with him, and uh, I think he's a better fighter. Honestly, I think 150% he's more gamey, trickier. He had a hell of a fight camp, and uh, he was the one willing to sign on the dotted line. So he's next. Tireless and bloodthirsty Tony pounced on Barbosa like a vulture on its prey which he was tearing down for one and a half rounds until he surrendered to a da-ass choke. No one else out, like, out there like me. I step it up every time because that's a natural thing for me. I'm the natural MMA guy. I'm the star out there right now. I'm changing this game up one fight at a time. I can't wait till the next one. It's hard to tell for sure how the fight between Ferguson and Nurmagomedov would have gone. If it happened back then, but it seemed that at this moment, Boogeyman was ahead of Habib in some aspects and was reaching his prime. He was at the top of his abilities and could maintain a crazy pace for all the given time. While the Dagestani was going through hard times in his career due to injuries and his condition left much to be desired. Well, you know, he was sparring, uh, he had great sparring and, uh, you know, no contact was actually made. He had took a step back. As he stepped back, his knee kind of went out on him, you know, and it's the same knee. And the thing of it is, when he came to training, he was, I would say, about 90%. So we were trying to work around the injury, the, the surgery, not the injury, because it was an injured, but trying to work around the surgery. And, uh, you know, it just it didn't hold. Luckily, the Eagle managed to bounce back from a series of traumas, which took away from him two years of performances at the highest level. And after that, he returned to a proper training. As for Ferguson, he already had seven successful performances, which logically were supposed to earn him a contender's fight, but not at all. As you understand, the times were tough. It was 2016 when the lightweight gold was put on the line for the notorious Irishman, and both Tony and Habib were clearly inferior to McGregor in terms of popularity in the media. 2015 was my year. 2016 is also my year. Every year is my fucking year. While the Dagestani was getting back into his previous fight-ready shape, El Kukui didn't want to sit straight. He expressed his desire to have a rematch against Michael Johnson, at that time the only UFC fighter who beat Ferguson by a decision back in the distant 2012. Surprisingly, the UFC listened to their fighter and even announced this clash for March 5th. According to the initial plan, the boogeyman was supposed to drown Michael in the puddle of his own blood at the 196th event. But soon, Johnson pulled out of this fight and was replaced by Nurmagomedov. As a result, the fight between Tony and Habib was scheduled for April 16th at UFC on Fox 19. This guy just needs his first loss. It don't matter with the Twitter beef or whatever's going on, whatever he can say. More, more, I love it. Bring it, this guy's gonna get his first loss. That's all I know, and it's gonna become not by decision. He's gonna we'll get finished. See. He's gonna get finished. We'll see. Dude, you have no conditioning. You're flat-footed, you have no rhythm, and you're one-dimensional. You get hurt by your team, man. We're gonna be surprised if you make it to blah, the Blah, 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 blah. No BS, just get there, all right? Just get there. You know, this is very hard for me. I don't fight two years. Now I am very exciting. I know 
for fans, very interesting how I come back. But for me, it's too. And that's why I ask UFC, give me toughest opponent. UFC say, we have Tony Ferguson, seven win streak. And I say, let's go, let's do this. Everything was going its way for the second attempt. The fighters were training and working on the specifics. The fans were tuning in and waiting. While the fighting world was getting ready to witness a clash between two top level lightweights on winning streaks. However, when there were less than two weeks left on the calendar, everything fell through again. We didn't get an opportunity to see this fight, but this time because of Tony, who had fluid and blood in his lungs. Due to health issues, Ferguson pulled out of the event, but knowing there wasn't anything serious about his condition, he asked the promotion to reschedule the bout with the Dagestani. The Eagles' response was the following. He called me, I don't understand why. He pulled out, he had to shut up now. But he talked too much, oh, uh, I asked him like May, June, something like this. But i training for this fight for a month. I cannot wait two more months because I have a lot of upset fans. I have to come back with somebody. Tony cannot speak about me because when I'm injured, I say be quiet. You understand? You have to give him at some Barbosa, I am injured. I don't ask him, hey, please waiting for me because this is stupid. This is stupid. You know, when you pull out, we have to stay shut up. In the end, Nurmagomedov caught up to the boogeyman in a number of victories in the lightweight division, dispatching Daryl Horcher in less than two rounds, a poor debutante who took the fight on short notice to experience a pressure machine in the face of an angry and more than ever hungry eagle. I feel like uh, last two years I sit down in the jail, I said this after fight, now I'm free, now, uh, now I'm ready for the title and uh, I'm happy about my comeback. I'm very excited when I go to the cage. You know, uh, I'm very happy now. On his part, Tony Ferguson reached out to a big MMA journalist, Ariel Helwani, whom he told about what happened to him and why we ultimately couldn't see his fight with Habib, which was organized for the second time. I noticed it on a, a couple weeks ago, like on a Wednesday, and it just accumulated through. And just like any other time when I ever, if I get hurt or injured, there's a difference. And, you know, at the time I was hurt and it just got worse and worse. And finally I had to go to the hospital, dude. Wow. And just, uh, so, yeah. No, it's not career threatening. We got the catch back from after I went to the specialist. Uh, they ended up, uh, you know, taking a deeper look at it. The big focus was to not have a fractured rib. But if it wasn't fractured and I just had like a little, like just something just wrong, I was going to fight. I was going to power through it. Uh, any other time I've ever had little bumps and bruises, that's all I've ever done. I've never pulled out of a fight area. Ever. Mm. This is like a first for, I mean, for me, and I'm sure all the fans are shocked. You know, I know my bosses were shocked. They called me and asked me what was going on. And, you know, I didn't have a, re a reason for them. You know, they were like, well, you need to train careful. And I'm like, well, I train the same way. Fixing his lung problems, El Kukui made an announcement that he was hungry to add the eighth name to his resume and complement his collection of victims with another sliced head. In the beginning of summer, he got Michael Chiesa as an opponent. These two were planning to share the cage on July 13th. At the same time, Habib was in long negotiations with the company on the matter of his title shot. Though on paper, he had only seven victories in the UFC, just like Ferguson, in reality, he had a streak of 23 consecutive victories with no losses, which kind of made him more deserving of a title shot. But again, mind you, that at that period, the world's best league was fully supporting Conor McGregor. That's why they completely dismissed the real contenders. In the end, Ferguson had a full camp for Michael, who pulled out two weeks before the fight due to a spine injury. And he got very unlucky again. Tony did not want to pull out of the tournament. That's why he accepted the fight with Lando Venata on short notice. Happy and just kind of crazy. Uh, there's more mixed feelings when I saw Khabib. Mm -hmm. Number what? Number one in the world now? Number two in the world now? Uh, pretty upset that he took the fight against a project manager um, when he wouldn't wait a couple weeks to get an actual legitimate fight that the fans and, and the fight fans and everybody else, the boss, everybody wanted this fight. I wanted this fight. We've signed, we signed on the dotted line a couple of times, and unfortunately, it just didn't happen. And timelines are different. His timelines are a little bit different than mine. I'm not saying he doesn't want to fight, but I'm a very scary opponent for his division. After putting on a show in the form of the American roller coaster on our nerves, 
The Mexican butcher finished Venata in the second round and earned his eighth victory in a row in the lightweight division. The majority of the straight thinking community knew that these two were supposed to fight for the number one contender spot in the weight class. Even despite the fact that their fight was cancelled twice, or more so, after the two cancellations of the Habib and Tony bout, there was some chemistry which attracted more and more fans to their rivalry. That's where a lot of questions from the media members were coming from, and the boogeyman had to answer them. I think I have a, a better chance of filing for Social Security before he comes back and fighting, man, because that dude just goes and fights and he, and, he, and he takes some time off. This dude, I don't know what his issue is, but I'm here, I'm ready, and I take on all comers, and uh, including new guys like Landon Venata. Uh, but Khabib Nurmagomedov, uh, you're not going anywhere, bro, and I'm a better wrestler than you. And uh, if wrestling was easy, it would be called Sambo. Either way, the UFC was not in a hurry to put these guys against each other for the third time. Instead, they set them in different directions, offering other opponents. The situation with Ferguson was quite simple. Here, you have a former champion, RDA. If you get the ninth consecutive victory, we'll definitely do something about your title shot. If not, it's your problem. Thus, El Kukui began his preparation for the Brazilian fighter. They're always picking the wrong guy, man. I got eight fights in a row, uh, win and by finishes. So I, I'm not in a rush. You know, it's, I, I've got my place. I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, when I get to that belt, I'm going to win it and I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to lose it. You know, the belt hasn't been held more than three times in this division. You know, it's something that I, I've been taking a little bit more pride in, you know, to make sure that all my skill levels are around. So let's talk more walk, you know. But the promotions bosses and matchmakers did Nurmagomedov a lot dirtier. By September, they sent the Dagestani two contracts for a title fight against the current champion Eddie Alvarez. Habib and Eddie were supposed to fight at UFC 205 for the undisputed championship, but on September 26th, the organization announced that the American would fight the notorious one and told the Eagle to kick rocks. In response to that, Nurmagomedov expressed his discontent on social media because of such a weird policy of the company and called it by its own name, a platform for freak shows. The Irishman, a clown, and Alvarez, a shitty champion. But it didn't change anything. Everybody dismissed the Dagestani's words and began to wait for another appearance of McGregor. Habib did not want to stay on the sidelines and he asked for another opponent. If we look at the dates, everything was rather close. On November 5th, Tony Ferguson obliterated Rafael Dos Anjos, demonstrating a legendary war dance and extending his streak to nine in a row. And a week later, on November the 12th, the Eagle mauled Michael Johnson on the ground and stopped him by Akimura in the third round, earning his eighth victory inside the promotion. I talk with Dana between every rounds. I talk with him, I say, hey, don't send me no more your fake contract. I need real contract. He talk about, oh yeah, you have to finish this fight. He say, you know already I deserve this. You have to send after this fight, real contract. He say, okay, let's go finish this. After I finish fight, I talk about, I'm waiting for agreements. When both fighters completed their part of the deal and won a seemingly unnecessary fight, but forced because of McGregor, the world's best league started backpedaling. Habib and Tony were moved to the side once again, hoping that Mac would return and defend his recently conquered belt. However, the Notorious wasn't in a hurry to come back into the octagon. Instead, he went to boxing to cash out a huge check for the fight with Floyd Mayweather and planned on how he was going to spend tens of millions of dollars. Ferguson and Nurmagomedov desperately tried to make the promotion notice them and let them know that they were ready to do whatever it took to get a deserved title shot. The only thing the league could do for them was to put them against each other for the third time with an interim lightweight belt on the line. This time, the fight between two boogeymen was targeted for March the 4th of 2017 at UFC 209. Of course, I'm excited about this fight, you know, because I fight for the title with a tough opponent, you know, around the world, a lot of people are going to watch this fight because this is truly a high-level fight in lightweight division. One of the greatest, I think, greatest matchup in lightweight division. And that's why, of course, I am very exciting, but same, same time, I am enjoy about this because I'm here like two days before weigh-in, 
three days before fight, my weight is good, my shape is good, and I, this is what I want all my life. You know, a couple days before, my dream has come true. Of course, I enjoy. 100% I think this is real championship fight. I, do, I, I don't care about him. You guys know his uncle Dana gave him gift. He jumped over with all contenders and he fight for the title, you know, like, I know understand this fight, he, 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 he catch him a couple times, he go down at the Alvarez. You know, this fight, I, for me, is a fake fight. And uh, I don't think about him. Hey, I have, we have real fight now. This is like people main event, you know. This is one of the biggest fights 2017, you know, of all time in UFC. And you guys think, uh, I think about other guys? What big stage? Every single stage is a big stage. And nothing can change here. It's the same game I play inside that octagon. There's two people and one referee, and that dude's gonna have to stop me from beating the shit out of Khabib. You know you can love somebody without liking him, man. I love Khabib, man. He's my brother in arms. We're all here. We're all for one. I got peace with him, but inside that we got beef. We gotta squash this shit. I'm, I'm tired of it, man. He's a bully. I'm gonna shut him up. But I got respect for him and his father and his whole camp. But the next time they try to surround me and my team, we got problems. Because the other day they tried to pull that stupid shit. And uh, I'm a dangerous man inside and outside that octagon, baby. But what could happen this time to not let this fight take place? What had to happen so that one of the professional fighters with years of experience wouldn't be able to get in the cage and perform? Lightning doesn't strike the same spot three times, right? Unfortunately, as we saw later, it really does. So as far as Connor goes in the belt, dude, that dude is so just so far out there. I hope he gets it in his head and comes back to the real top. This is where we're at. So this belt, I consider it the real belt, regardless if it's interim or not. If I can hold it and I can feel it, and if it's fucking shiny as fuck, it's real enough for me. It's different. I'm gonna slice and dice him with the new rules as far as the UFC goes. Boy, he's got something else coming for him. I'm keeping these things sharp on a metal grade. It's gonna yeah, with the sparks flying, baby. And here's what went wrong. Yeah, have fun with that weight cut. Suck in there. Conditioning sucks. <laughs> when there was literally one day left, it turned out that Habib Nurmagomedov got into hospital due to health complications. The footage from the stare down clearly proves that he was affected by a severe and exhausting weight cut, which compromised Eagle's body and deprived us of an opportunity to see this fight for the third time. So I lost that extra little bit of weight and uh, awesome, rehydrated, got to go to see the doctors. They, they passed me and I was doing awesome. And then it was, it was funny, I'm laying down and I'm sitting there with my wife and I'm like, okay, I got to get better. I felt kind of and uh, long story short, uh, I took a little nap. And as soon as I woke up from the nap, I'm like, man, what the hell? Like, people look like they're like, somebody died or something. And they were like, Tony, uh, Khabib is sick. He went to the hospital. Uh, I, was, I can't even say like well, how I felt. Uh, it was kind of This is um, still kind of a hard pill to swallow. Uh, I prepared really hard for this fight, and I know he did too. Uh, just suck, man. Um, first thing I thought about was sending him a text. I didn't have his number, obviously, but, uh, you know, I sent him a message on Twitter just to wish him good luck because uh, I don't wish that bad stuff on anybody. And I know he's a true warrior. He's going to bounce back. I thought it was a nightmare, man. Something worse than El Kukui. There's just some shit stuff that you had to go through. This happens in the fight game. No disrespect to the UFC or to Khabib. Everything happens for a reason. Um, this is a fighter sport, man. So I want every single one of you to give love for the UFC and give love to Khabib. And I really want you guys to buy this pay-per-view because the rest of the card is amazing! Another sick leave of the Dagestani did not phase Ferguson. Also, the world's best league was not phased by the fact that the notorious Irishman was not planning to return and create a logjam in the lightweight division. Everybody was acting based on the given circumstances. While Habib was healing up and McGregor partying, Tony was working hard and bothering the promotion, fighting for his title shot. They answered his call and said they were ready to give him another shot at the interim title and his opponent was set to be a young prospect on the winning streak in the face of Kevin Lee. 
Otherwise, I'm moving on to Khabib. I, I already got my mind set on that one. That's the one I'm looking for. You know, these dudes, they, they underestimate my strength, my wrestling, and my movement. You know, they, they think I'm a stupid fighter out there that I'm just coming. I think he thought that I was just going to come out and bulldoze and push forward. But you see, I was on my toes. I was moving, set the distance real well. Uh, he was really slow, a lot slower than I thought he was. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm going to be a smart fighter, and I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to keep moving, and, and I'm, I'm chasing after championships. I'm not, I'm not looking to go backwards. El Kukui absolutely didn't care who he had to devour after nominal appearance in the octagon. What mattered the most was the division's gold and status of a champion on the line. That's why he agreed to fight on October the 7th in the main event of UFC 216. He has a big mouth, which I think gets in the way of his talent. Now he has great technique and hopefully he doesn't let that get in the way. Because if he tries to go out there and emulate something that you're not, that's fake. Don't be fake, be real. This man been doing all the talking this whole time, won't even look me in my eyes. You see, I ain't no bitch. I'm a, you better be ready to fight, I'll tell you that. Strawberry letter number 23. Listen to it, feel it, and enjoy it. I wanna say thank you to my fans. I weighed in on time. I'm a professional, and I will continue to be professional. I'm gonna teach this kid a lesson. He talks too much. The 33-year-old version of the Boogeyman in his prime and without additional injuries simply ran over the young and cocky Kevin Lee. El Kukui did a great job exhausting his opponent and draining him to the last drop with a triangle choke which brought him the victory in this clash. Thus, Ferguson earned his 10th consecutive victory and became the interim lightweight champion. Habib Nurmagomedov was patiently waiting for this whole time. To be honest, he even thought of retiring due to such frequent injuries which pushed him out of the sport for long periods of time. Luckily, the support of his father and team did its thing and the Dagestani continued to compete. The Eagle managed to come back only by December of 2017. At the very beginning of the month at UFC 219, he shared the cage with Edson Barboza and was coming into this fight with a huge confidence in his powers. This fight is a, a real contender fight and uh, he's, um, nah, he's top 5, I'm top 5, you know. And uh, after this fight, I'm gonna fight for the title when I beat, beat him, inshallah. And, uh, this, this year I want to finish and new year I want to come like number one contender. Yeah, I, I talk with you, so I talk with Dana. Dana told me you have to make weight, beat this guy if you want to fight for the title and I agree with him. Quite expectedly, Habib Nurmagomedov stormed the Brazilian with such an onslaught and domination which poor Edson ultimately couldn't recover from. Throughout 15 minutes, the Dagestani beast was driving Edson into the canvas until he earned an impressive victory via unanimous decision. When 2018 came around, the world's best league finally realized that the Notorious was not willing to come back to mixed martial arts. Looking at the lightweight rankings once again, they found out this. On one hand, they have Habib Nurmagomedov, the fighter from Dagestan with 25 victories and no losses, nine of which were earned in the UFC, and on the other, Tony Ferguson, the interim UFC champion, a rightful number one contender for the undisputed title, and simply a terrifying fighter on a streak of 10 victories. On paper, everything looked absolutely logical and clear. Even despite three failed attempts, the championship of the lightweight division had to be contested by Tony Ferguson and Habib Nurmagomedov. At the moment, there wasn't anybody more deserving. The world's best league acted in accordance with common sense and tried to put them in the octagon for the fourth time. Now the date was April the 7th and the event UFC 223. And of course, they made the title vacant. I think it's gonna be happen. I hope. You know, but when I pull out, everybody talk about this, but you guys remember why I fight with that uh, Horcher? Because he pull out. He pull out too. You know, like, I pull out, he pull out. Now is, we're going to fight for real belt. You know, 10 win streak versus 25 win streak. Let's go. Well, they offered me Connor. Connor didn't want to fight. 
So I want to fight people that actually want to sit there and fight. I'm not going to beg somebody to go there and fight. This is the real belt. I fought 10 fights. You guys all watched them. If not, you're casual. Go back, go watch my fights, and you'll see exactly why I have this belt. I am the champ. Connor McNuggets is nothing. He's lost his sauce. And this is Defender Vacate. This is right here. I'm defending my belt. My belt, I'm defending. Dana, what time is it? <laughs> what time is it, Dana? Please tell these guys. <laughs> it's Tony time, bitch. I want to fight with best guys. Move that head, move that head. That's why I have to fight with Tony Ferguson. Nice. I want to make him tired and make him tap. If he's not tap, I, I'm going to break his arm. After fight, maybe one shoulder, his arm, second shoulder, my belt, and new lightweight undefeated champion. Do you think breaking my arm is going to stop me? Please, I'm going to hit you with that thing. I'm going to knock you out with it. I think that they had the issue. I think that they changed a lot of things in their camp. They had to hire a bunch of people, tap my phone, do whatever they had to do in order to get this thing through. Uh, but I believe black and blue, and through and through, I'm gonna go out there and make that dude see red. The dude's never been cut in his whole entire life. Uh, he's got a 25 and 0 padded record. He's got flat feet, no rhythm, and he's fat, fat head. Thus, fat head. If you noticed, with every attempt to book this doomed fight, the circumstances were getting as crazy as can be. And this trend was only moving upwards, right to the top of the insanity scale, not down. If there are some of you who don't remember why Habib and Tony couldn't identify who the best lightweight on the planet was on the fourth attempt, we will remind you. I was f***ing convinced. I told Jamie, I told Jimmy Smith, I'm like, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. It's April Fools. The shit's coming out on April Fools. F*** you, man. You'll fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me 50 times or how many times I've been busted by April Fools. I'm like, there's no fucking way Tony Ferguson got hurt a week before the fight. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. And it's true. That's the first thing I thought. I'm like, oh my God, everyone's going to think this is April Fools. This is what Dana said. Yeah, everyone's, no one's going to believe this. As it turned out, it was the brutal truth. The news that appeared on April 1st that El Kukui got injured with just seven days left to the fight happened to be more than real. While he was giving an interview to the UFC staff, Ferguson didn't notice the TV cable laying on the floor, stumbled on it, and tore his cruciate ligaments. Sounds like ravings of a crazy man. We agree with that, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, it is, yes. <laughs> um, I, I was calling people today, and everybody thought it was an April Fool's joke, but unfortunately, it's not. Tony Ferguson uh, hurt himself. He tore his LCL, and apparently, that's an injury that you don't need surgery on, but he actually tore it off the bone. He's going to need surgery uh, on his knee. As a result, Habib performed at this event and fought El Iaquinta, whom he beat by a unanimous decision and became the new lightweight champion. While Ferguson was immediately stripped of his title without any specifics on the matter of his future in the fighting game. Man, I mean, how do you think I feel? That sucks. I mean, really. I tweeted this happened on Friday, but the accident actually happened Thursday during my media obligations for the UFC. I mean, I was walking to say hi to a Fox crew member and want to say, and I slipped on one of those like big black thick cords in the production studio, but it was dark and it was hard to see, but, man, but I wasn't wearing my shades. I had actually my prescription sunglasses on, and that was when I was about to do my interview in the studio on the herd with uh, Kristen. Unfortunately, as history taught us, it was the last attempt of the world's best league to put Prime Ferguson and Nurmagomedov against each other. We will just briefly go over the further events. Both Habib and Tony performed in October at UFC 229, earning bright victories. The Dakistani beat McGregor, while the bloodthirsty American of Mexican descent defeated Pettis. Khabib and I deserve to fight. We need to fight for the fifth time. We need to try this out again. He is the champ. I was the intern champ. I'm still the fucking champ. There's no BS in this. Connor does not want to fight me. I saw him when we were walking out to the weigh-ins. He walked up, he did his strut. I turned around and he fucking stopped. He looked like a deer in headlights. Nobody wants to be trapped inside that cage with me. They don't want to get cut by my elbows. They don't want to get hit by any of my kicks and they don't want their conditioning checked by me. I'm a different animal than these guys. They want to be animals inside there. I'm the dog catcher, guys. After that, El Kukui was going through a rough patch in his life. He got older in less than a year due to continuous waiting games from the world's best league and their mockery in the form of a fight with another interim championship. 
he developed mental issues which couldn't be resolved without intervention of doctors. At the same time, Habib was being suspended for a brawl after the biggest fight in his career. The boogeyman managed to return only by June of 2019, but it was already not the same Ferguson that we knew before. But even that version of Tony managed to beat Donald Cerrone and extend his winning streak to 12 in a row. And the champion of the division returned to the octagon on September the 7th and defended his title in a fight against Diamond. We hope you didn't get confused. Let's transition. When are we going to see the Habib Narmagomedov Tony Ferguson fight? Is that the fight to make? What's holding that up? Yeah, nothing's holding it up. It's, uh, you know, the fight is, is in the process of being made. And, uh, you know, it's obviously the next fight to make. So it's, it will happen. You might be thinking right now, if everybody who followed the sport at that period of time saw what was happening with Tony Ferguson, why in the lead up to the fifth attempt to organize this fight, there almost weren't any fans who didn't want to see it? The answer is in the question itself, because it was the fifth goddamn attempt to put these two in the cage, close it and watch the action. Even if it was 46-year-old Ferguson, not a 36-year-old, and on a streak of not 12, but 24 victories, it didn't matter. Just make it happen and let us watch this fight. That's how the fans felt, us included, before the upcoming event. In other words, Dana White didn't lie. We were promised that they would try to book the Eagle and El Kukui for the last time in April of 2020 at the notorious event of UFC 249. I'm actually going to spar this time. I haven't sparred since T-Bow. Oh, wait, hold on. You like beating on high school wrestlers? That are preparing for state the week before? Hold on, hold on. And you like making homeless do push-ups in New York and making fun of them. I owe you two to the stomach and you owe me 20 push-ups, but I will do the push-ups with you when you lose. I think we have to fight him. your legacy. Like, uh, I think he's, uh, he deserves this, you know. He is real challenge. You know, I respect his skills, you know. But, you know, like, uh, like fighter, he's a very good fighter. But why people don't like him? Because he's a stupid guy, you know, that's why. Nobody understand him. I'm very know? educated, man. Like, honestly, like, he look like stupid, you know? That's why nobody like him. You seem to be in really great spirits. I commend you for um, going headfirst into some, you know, mental health issues and working through that. It takes a lot of courage as a professional athlete, especially a lot of people look up to you. Thank you. I, I was giving you props. I was, I was just wondering. The advice. Next question. I wasn't giving you advice, sir. Sorry, okay. Uh, this kid's a bully. He's never been in a street fight, never actually been thrown into a trash can or like any kind of shit like that. So now you're street fucking, fight, you're I you're can fucking eat with you. somebody that hey, you don't want to. Hey, I don't have to bring this. Sunglasses. Up. In I'm street, street fight, fight, I can eat you. You understand? No, Who are you? Yeah. You never fight in the street. You American guy. In American, you cannot fight in the street. There we go. Here I am is, from right? Real Mountain. I can eat you in the street. Here we fight. go. What are you talking about? All you Americans, right, that are uh, cheering for this hey, little bitch. I don't care all Americans. They know. Love you. They know where I'm from. I can eat in a street fight. What are you talking about? Well, I'm gonna tell you, it makes me feel very uncomfortable. I got something coming for him. I'm gonna bitch slap that dude, I'm gonna hit him twice in the stomach, I'm gonna make him piss blood, and then he's gonna give me 20 push-ups. You gotta understand one thing, you don't piss a guy off like me. You have better luck running through hell with your underwear soaked in gasoline than the fuck with a guy like me, Khabib. Everybody who is more or less familiar with the industry knows what happened next. The fight between Habib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson was cancelled for the fifth time. Now, the reason was the pandemic and COVID restrictions. Many then joked about this topic, saying that if we witnessed this fight being organized for the sixth time, there would be the end of the world or a UFO would come to the planet and cause something terrible. And in fact, at that time, it was putting an unconscious smile on our faces because we didn't know what a series of circumstances related to the cancellation of this fight would lead to. And now, it's not even remotely funny. Man, it's been a long camp, I'll be real. Uh, we've been preparing since November. Uh, obviously, the 18th didn't follow through with Khabib. Obviously, Justin was the only one that wanted to sign on the dotted line. Uh, just a long camp and then just, you know, not the weight cut had nothing to do with it. Justin's a tough 
I'll be real. Um, I prepared for Khabib, not too much of a striker. <laughs> happens, man. What can you do, man? But uh, I would have much rather got finished instead of having somebody step in in it. I was still inside of it, even though I, uh, you know, he stopped. I wish I would have. I got finished. Nobody can be same long time. Nobody. No Tony Ferguson. No Khabib. Nobody. And one day, someone gonna someone gonna beat you or something gonna happen. You know, God don't give to nobody. It's like fear, power, like reaction, mental, everything in one level, level always. One day it's gonna be go down, you know, and his day come. And it was April, it was in April or May? May, May. May, yes. And uh, I understand it's like uh, Tony Ferguson's time is finished, you know. Now he gonna come back, someone gonna beat him, beat him again, I believe, because when you when you take damage like this, you never gonna be same. Never ever. Even if you're Tony Ferguson. Mm. You know, he takes too much damage, you know. You see how he tap, how he give up end of the five, five round? You know? He go like this. To our deepest regret, the belligerent and always competitive spirit of Tony Ferguson couldn't come to terms with the fact that he wasn't able to handle the top level up position in the UFC anymore. In the span of the next four years, the boogeyman and once the most fearsome lightweight in the world on a record streak entered the octagon and lost to everybody the organization has given him. And every time it looked scarier, more upsetting and devastating. Right now, El Kukui has an anti-record of 8 losses in a row, only 3 of which ended with a decision, a unanimous one of course. While Habib already finished his career in 2020 after the win over Justin Gaethje, who caused the irreversible downfall of Tony Ferguson. That's how the story goes, guys. Tony did not Tony tonight looked like he should retire. At such moments, you seriously think that if humankind got an opportunity to get back in time and change at least one or a couple of events, the first thing one should definitely do is talk Ferguson out of an unnecessary fight with Justin Gaethje, or simply convince him to wait for a couple of months more until the situation in the world became more stable, because these months cost Tony a lion's share of lost health. It's not a surprise for me because he is four years old. I just want to wish him all the best. He is, he is uh, truly one of the best who ever was doing in UFC. I just want to wish him all the best. And uh, his life just beginning, what I think. Because he's just four years old and he just finished his MMA career. Now it's going to be a different life, much better life. Uh, of course, in, in prime, my prime and his prime, it's supposed to be a very interesting fight. But what, what I can do, it was, uh, he had a couple of time injuries, I have a couple of time injuries. It is what it is, you know. Sometimes we have plans, but God have his plan, you know, and we cannot control this. The rivalry of Tony Ferguson and Habib Nurmagomedov is one of a kind. We have no doubts that this video will provoke another wave of discussions about who would win in his prime and that's cool. Both of them gave us indescribable emotions when they performed at their peak and desperately tried to fight each other. But what happened can't be changed. We can only feel nostalgic about times in the past, remember them with warmth in our hearts and move on. Thanks for watching. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the new videos. And of course, hit the like button if you enjoyed this one. See you soon. Um, with Khabib, I had said all those competitive fights and with the losses, he felt enough to be able to be like, all right, cool, I'm going to take the... And he took the fucking bait. He mm. took the bait and he was like, okay, we're going to go against this guy. And it was the only opportunity because I had said, I was like, I can play you in chess, I can play you in anything, I'm still going to kick your ass in whatever fucking sport it is. 